I'm Christian Eck. Today on CY Interview, we welcome back CY Interview sponsor, the founder of Epic Financial Strategies, LLC, Rob Gill. Rob, thanks again for being with us on CY Interview. How are you today? Blessed and highly favored, Chris, and thanks for having me. Oh, you're most welcome. So we have brought in a special guest from Rob today, former Louisville Cardinals basketball player, Taekwon Dean. He played at the school from 2002 to 2006 and then played overseas for a bunch of years. Taekwon, thanks for joining us and see you every day. How are you? Same here. It's an honor. Uh, like Rob said, bless and highly favored. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. So, Rob, why don't you just begin and, and, and just give a quick overview of how you guys came together and how you met? Incredible story. I, um, I, you know, my son Riley played JV basketball and they lost the championship game. And one of the things that stood out was the fundamental lack of training in certain little situational things that could have been done. So Chris, you know me, I was, I was, I wasn't happy. And I decided about a week later to start an AAU program for not only the, his age, which was 16, but also my son, Rob, which was 17. And as you know, I have great teachers in my life. And the first one that really stood out to me was, was Jay Bilstein um, because he always tapped into my study of Bob Hurley Sr. from St. Anthony's, like the, the discipline and what that approach was. And um, because of that, I started this, but I'm very competitive. And I knew that I had to get players from other programs. And because I love doing videos on social media, I began to disrupt the status quo, Jay Bilstein style, of Hoop Group here in New Jersey. And certain players started coming over, and I guess a lot of people, they found it comical at first, and like, who's Rob Gill, and he never put anyone to college, and um, all of this, all of these things began to happen, but when you create a movement, there's always a first answer, right? You have the Absolutely. crazy guy, but then the first answer legitim legitimizes the crazy guy. And as a basketball fan here in New Jersey, I, there was a person that everyone knows the name Taekwondo Dean. I had never met him before in my life, but I, I had seen him play in high school a couple of times. And um, all of a sudden, I'm in the gym, and whenever somebody would come in the gym that I didn't know, I'd introduce myself. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm Rob Gill. And he goes, oh, you're the man I'm looking for. And I shook his hand, and he goes, I'm Taekwondo Dean. And what's interesting is the, the moment him and I connected to 90 Days Later, the level of congruency and intention, intentionality has been insane. But here's what I will say. Right after we talked a little bit, he really drew the picture. And this is for this is for business owners that are out there right now. He spoke about the fundamentals of basketball or or the fundamentals, if you want to talk football, blocking and tackling. And, and the thing that stood out the most was the time he spent overseas, he discovered that the, the culture of basketball was team-oriented and fundamentals, which is what we lack here in the United States. As a matter of fact, we promote individuality. And he said that the NBA is already making their claim by, you know, really bringing these kids in on the first, second rounds. And we could be ahead of that. Now, that was like not even in. So if you look at me an hour before practice that day and an hour after, like you would have never known that massive shift that just took place. And right after that, I, I let him speak to the kids. He gave a five minute, five minute video. I think you saw it. That video went viral on Twitter. Um, I think within a week, there was over 500,000 views. And, you know, sometimes you, you, you don't know what you don't know um, and you stay open to not being married to a specific outcome, but enjoy the process. And I think, you know, if I fast forward, including and I, and I like Taekwon to really share the rest of the journey, what has happened since then, including a partnership with France's AAU program, over 400 national kids has been completely and beautifully and wildly insane, of which we are shifting to and already building out a financial literacy, mental health cur curriculum that's tied to showing these kids on how to market and brand themselves. Taekwon, why don't you talk a little bit about what you're doing with Rob today and um, how you guys are changing the world? Well, the, the, the backstory um, is uh, I had a 16-year career in, uh, in Europe. And yes. within that 16 years, I had uh, nine different agents. And I, I experienced the dark side of, of Europe for the first uh, eight years of my career, which was not being paid on time, not being paid my contracts, uh, being put in, in different countries where um, I didn't get the uh, best care. So within that, within my career, I always said when I was going to retire, I was going to help the next generation not experience what I went through because it's not being talked about. Um, so upon retiring, I got uh, Rick Pitino, Jamal Mashburn, 
and uh, accrue to uh, buy the team that I retired from. And I became the first general manager in American general manager in French history. And disruption is, is one thing that Rob's always talks about. And I was disrupting in France and uh, got the team to win a championship the first time in, in 19 years. And within me doing that, uh, they didn't like that. As a young as a young American coming in, changing the culture, and obviously the kids seeing that there was a different way and a different path of, of, of succeeding. And long story short, they they got me out of there. And I was in a, in a situation where I had no outlet. And I flew, I flew back home uh, to New Jersey on a one-way ticket with no money, no money in bank account, no, no idea of, of what was next for me. And upon me coming back, seeing social media, I saw, you know, Rob making a lot of noise. But one thing that he, he said that was, that was very clear was disruption. And I knew I had to meet him. Uh, and upon uh, talking to a friend, trying to figure out who would know who he was, uh, I realized that he would be at the gym at this certain time. So I, I popped up. Upon me popping up, uh, it wasn't scripted. It wasn't, I didn't know what the meeting was going to, if I was even going to be able to uh, have a conversation with him. And we had that conversation and he asked me to speak and I didn't rehearse it. Didn't know what I was going to say. It was, it was really from the heart. And from that conversation that he recorded, it went viral. And he called me in the next day and he changed my life. I'm going to be honest, I, I had nothing. And he slid a check across the table and really was sincere in what he wanted to do. And it was change kids' lives. And that's what I wanted to do. So our manifestations came together that day. And here we are today. And, and I don't know how many days it's been, but we're changing lives at an alarming rate. So let's just break it down. Uh, four years playing basketball at the University of Louisville for Rick Pitino, then more than a decade overseas playing basketball, and you now come back to America basically starting over. So what do you hope to share with the next generation to avoid some of the things that you have been through? Love. Mm. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, these athletes have been taken advantage of. I've, I'm a living example of it. And no one, I don't want to say no one was strong enough to go against the system, but Rob is the only one that I've seen that's been sincere but has the heart to do it and do it in a way where it's, it's with integrity. But at the same time, he has a, has a mission, his own mission, and I have mine as well. And we're putting, a, putting that together and we're bridging the gap between Europe and, and America because technically I've spent more time in Europe than I have in America. And if you see the NBA, you see that it's becoming more international. And if we could get to that younger generation, that gap, and it's happening in America as well, where kids, the AAU system has, has used and abused. I'm going to be honest. They use and abuse these, these kids, and no one's paying attention, one, to mental health, financial literacy. Uh, I, I'm an example of, of, of going broke after making money because I, I come from a, a family that doesn't know anything about finances. Uh, no one is there to teach me about finances. And I had no outlet. And to see what Rob is doing is, is, is needed, but it's also um, it's the, it's, it's helping the next generation. Rob, how has your love of basketball brought you together with Taekwon? Yeah, you know, Chris, great question. And um, we talk about what happened when you were with me in 2013. And th that that time is why what's happening now is so it's so beautifully uh, relevant because the book and the curriculum and everything we're doing about not only surviving success, right, but also dealing with wealth wounds, which are tied to mental health, but also how you were brought up. So Taekwon touched on a couple of things. Um, the first thing that he spoke about was the lack of financial literacy, right? As as I got sober. And as I began to make my first wave of financial success, we'll call it, I never dealt with my wealth wounds. So by the time you came with me and I was in the middle of that disruption, it was because on some level I decided that I didn't deserve it subconsciously. And I created that very nature and that environment that you were involved in in 2013. Meaning I had to deal with what my financial scarcity mindset really was, even in sobriety. 
So from the time you had left until we are now, I've really dealt with that. And it made me, when Taekwon came on the scene and I began to look, as you hear the stat all the time, 80% of players, after they retire from any profession, wind up going bankrupt, right? That's a real stat that you hear over and over again. So if you look at high school, there's a million five, 1.5 million players that go to high school, talk about basketball, 1,500 go to college, you know, get a scholarship, 30 of those 1,500 in that book or in that, you know, that, that, that algorithm that we're talking about actually make it to the NBA, and then 24 go bankrupt. So only six of them that put in 40, 50,000 hours worth of work have money left over. So the question is, how do we teach? Because if you look at the entrepreneur world, athletes really are good at entrepreneurship because of the fundamentals of every day, either dribbling, shooting, or practice. You know, becoming subject matter subject matter master at a, as being a shooter or a dribbler, so that could translate into a business. You may not learn that in science class, you may not learn that in math class, but you could learn how to build a business based on a craft that you're good at, which is repetition, right? So I began to think, all right, how do we how do we how do we educate these kids earlier and also teach them how to market and brand themselves? And it all it's all happening only because I am a fan and I love basketball. It was my first love. I've always loved. I still love it. I love it differently now, though. I'm not so much a fan of like watching um, the NBA or the you know the tournament. I'm more of a fan of what we're doing right now, the impact that we're having on these kids, because I want to be able to say, okay, 10, 15 years from now, if we change 10 or 20 lives a year based on this model, and we do that for for a length, one of those pe- one of those kids can become a billionaire, and can employ thousands and thousands of people, right? So it's really not. It's not so much the it, we're representing the splash today, but I really believe that what we're doing, the, the, the ripple will be felt over the next 10, 20, 30 years if we stay on this path. And it's all um, so as well. Makes sense. I, I think it's a I think it's a great story and wish you the best on that, of course. So take on, you know, looking at this entire scenario and situation aside from impacting today's view, what else do you want to accomplish with your life going forward? What are your goals? Man, there there's a uh, a part of this world that I heard, honestly, uh, they they're voiceless. They they feel like there's no outlet, mm-hmm. and I want to be able to to help them understand that there is an outlet and bridge the gap between uh, the racial boundaries here in America, where you know there's white on this side, black on this side. Um, to be honest with you, the success that I've I've accomplished was due to uh, a group of white families helping me. And that needs to be sp- spoken about a lot more than than it's uh, you know, being being portrayed, you know, in this country. And I want to be able to bridge that gap as well. So it's a lot that I, I want to do, but it's about giving. And there was a saying that I I, I heard yesterday where it said, uh, you know, money doesn't buy happiness. And technically, that person didn't give enough of it because mm. when you give, mm. you know, you you receive. And it's it's, it's more about giving. Mm them receiving in this world and, and Rob has I've seen that firsthand from him uh after observing him a lot. Uh he's more about giving and he receives a lot more. You know, he gives a lot but he receives a lot more and that is not financial. It, uh it's it's more about uh you know how, what he's given to this this universe, uh in this community. Rob is 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 I'm gonna say an angel man. He mm-hmm. really is. Uh his heart is his heart is pure and if we have more more of that on this world and, and giving love and uh we'll be in a better place. Speaking of your, you know, of the college years at the University of Louisville, is there anything you'd like to do there in the future? It's not just that university, it's it's uh many universities. Um mental health is is is, is a real thing. And that's something that needs to be tackled and not be a fad and, and it's like any other thing. People see see a success in a certain area, they they take advantage of financial gain. But it's it's much more than a financial uh, benefit from this. And if we tackle that uh, in that athletics, uh, I think the world would be a better place. So, Rob, what do you see for Taekwon in your organization and what you're doing going forward with all of these AAU basketball things? Yeah, well, he's he, <clears throat> sorry, he is the CEO of the basketball portion of what we're doing. So whatever okay. he, whatever he decides next as far as where he wants to go, that's, you know, I, I'll sit with him privately and joke around and say, listen, I'm, I'm, you're a stop. I'm a stop along your highway of your redemption. Um, if you know Taekwon's story, which I find so fascinating statistically 
is he's never had a drink or a drug, right? We know that his mom committed suicide right in front of him when he was six. His grandparents died, you know, when he was seven and eight. His sister had to move out because she was raped when he was nine, ten. And then he was left all alone. Um, he had some guardians, and he also referred to the families that had helped him along the way. But put all that to the side. You know there's wealth wounds there already, and there's scars, and there's PTSD. He then goes to Louisville, and he's about to lose his scholarship because of JUCO kids coming in because as he showed up to Louisville as an incoming freshman, he was 6'2", 160, not blazing speed at that level at that time. And um, he asked for 30 days. And, and, you know, Chris, when I hear this, this is so incredible. He asked for 30 days, and he was granted 30 days. And then he got with the trainer, um, lifted weights three times a day, and each time he lifted, he then shot 1,000 shots. He did 3,000 shots a day for 30 days. I'm not sure if that's ever happened before. I've been around the game a long time. 3,000 shots a day is like you're sleeping in the gym. And as a result, he got not only a scholarship, but Patino became a, a brother to him, right? So that connective tissue was real. Um, but still, there wasn't the, the people in his life that can, you know, show him certain things that he, he could or couldn't see. By the time he gets to be a senior after an outstanding junior year, the rest of the team is gone. He's with all the freshmen at this point and sophomores. And he gets hurt. And as a result, he falls down the draft and eventually doesn't get drafted is he, he meets with a scrupulous dude that that you know does scrupulous things and it prevents him from going to the nba now the story is that that was part of his journey and and he doesn't hold any resentments which i think is phenomenal but when he came on the scene with us the power of taekwon his relationship capital is off the charts his credit we'll call his basketball credit and credibility he gets he has full access to anybody he calls. There's not one person that's met that I've seen that's mad at him, holds any resentment towards him, and there's people that just want to serve with him. And I'm not going to say to his fault because I've done this and I don't like to use that word, but there's been times as he's climbed the scale or climbed the mountain of business, which is different than basketball, but the same. You know, he's made he's connected people together that forgot about him in the latter part of those connections. And that's some of the things that we're working on now to make sure that his time is, is, is validated financially, not egotistically, but based on his 40, 50,000 hours of basketball that is allowing him to have impact on business for the sole purpose of helping kids that were just like him when he was coming up and how to really be able to disrupt and interrupt what eventually could happen to them if they don't meet the right people. Well said. Well, I wish you guys the best as you continue to impact today's youth in basketball and beyond. So for C Winerview sponsor, the founder of Epic Financial Strategies, LLC, Rob Grill, and former Louisville Cardinals basketball player, Taekwon Dean, this is Chris Yannick for C Winer. Thank you guys for being on C Winerview today. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching today's C Wine Review segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future C Wine Review content from Las Vegas and beyond.